This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest is Bill Miller, and Bill's here to talk about sort of the, the further evolution of his big tattoo project, if you will. But first, I just want to remind all the viewers, in case you don't know, that Bill is also the one that did all the images <laughs> for the opening of our show. And when it was just rolling, all of a sudden I thought, oh yeah, Bill did them at the end too. So that's another thing that we have to thank him for. Anyway, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it feels like that we were talking about your, your tattoo project about a year ago, but I think you said it goes back even further than that, right? Right. Actually, the, the ink project started, well, actually two years ago now. Okay. And uh, that was the very beginning when we started thinking what to do and how to go about it and be began photographing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, after this two years, what I, what's really changed me and changed itself has been the ink project, how it's morphed over the last two years. And that's, you know, and we've been, I've talked about it, I think mm -hmm. I've been on twice actually, from mm -hmm. the very beginning, during the middle. And, and right about your opening, it was like when you did the, the opening at the, the winery, right? Right, right, the yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know if they have a picture of the ink and kind of an idea of what it is, in case some folks didn't get involved in mm -hmm. that. But uh, the ink, and that our, was our logo, is, it still is. I love that. It was that images and insights into why people get tattoos. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was to show, I think, some artful images of what the tattoos looked like. Um, I don't see anything popping up, but... It will. There we are. Um, there's just your average young man, you know. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea was to show those kinds of images, mm -hmm. uh, but to include the explanation as to why. With the, hopefully the goal was to reduce bias and stereotyping mm -hmm. against people with tattoos because it's there, you know. Mm -hmm. That's so true. from that point in time, though, what happened is it's changed from tattoos to it went into more of a social position, if you will. Okay. Making a social statement about mm -hmm. it. Um, that morphed into actually original research. So that Linfield College and now Arizona State University has taken the images and the uh, explanations and they're using it to measure um, people's reactions to tattoos. And it's the next stage of that has now been, if you will, the, the public outreach to it. And I began a, a series of public talks about ink. And that's sort of what I wanted to let you know about today. Yeah. It's, it's a kind of outreach to the community. Okay. That's a little premature. We're not there yet. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that'll come up a little bit later. Okay. So this is what's happening with the talk. I love it because I've been able to take everything that came from the project and people's responses to it and put it into a consistent story to share with people. So I go out in the talk and I literally say to them, you know, what kind of a person would get a tattoo? <laughs> you know? And then I would right. say, you know, it's those kinds of people. Right. You know, the, not you, not me, but those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And then what I like to do is to share with them then images of tattoos followed by a portrait of that person. And I'm saying, look, do you see these people? They're just like you. They're just like me. They're your teachers. They're mm -hmm. your ministers. They're the kids of your ministers. You know, they're educators, managers, anybody in this community. So it's not those people. It's just us. Right. And yeah. So, yeah. And some of us like to wear tattoos. And, and that's kind of the, the emphasis that it starts off like that. And then once I can sort of establish that they're not evil people, it's like, okay, so what does it mean? I mean, they have skulls and crossbones mm -hmm. and animals and all kinds of strange things on their body. And it's sort of like a 99.99% .99 rule, which means almost 100% of the time you're going to be wrong. You know, it, it doesn't matter what the tattoo is, or it doesn't matter how it's rendered but people really won't know what it means because it's a symbol. So then I follow up and I uh, will show them various tattoos and, and all of this during the talk is, it's only about half of what was in the show. I, I mm -hmm. enter in new pictures and new okay. stories and um, I'm able to show them the images and then tell them the story behind it. 
And the whole idea being is, you see, people do this for a very important reason. It's because they have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like you're driven to do it. And then I sort of morph that into the idea of tattoos are about sharing, tattoos are about celebrating. And I think for a lot of people, that's an odd concept. You know, celebrating? Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, it's about celebrating. And so I, I tell them, you know, it's about celebrating love, family, kids, animals, uh, beauty, uh, yeah. overcoming things, uh, overcoming maybe something that the world has done to you or maybe you did to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a lot of cases, overcoming death. So, and, you know, I asked him, I said, all you have to do is just ask. You know, don't sit there and uh, make up your mind that that's some terrible tattoo. Well, yeah, you're right, because, I mean, part of it is, you know, it, it's not as if they've written something down in a journal and locked it in the bedroom drawer. They put it right here. Right. They want you to see it so you can go ahead and ask the question. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Right. Uh, a good example, I was sitting in the Bitter Monk ah. last week having some tea, <laughs> and <laughs> honest. And there was a, a young man at the bar, and he had two full sleeves, you know, both mm -hmm. arms. And I just sat there and I went, wow, those are some neat tattoos. I bet there's some great stories there. And he, he looked at me and I said, yeah. And I told him I had done this thing and I'm always interested in tattoos. And he went on to tell me, this arm represents, I'm a veteran. These are my friends who either died in mm -hmm. duty or PTSD, commit suicide. I mean, really heavy. Mm -hmm. But he had stories, for, and he made a point of not just telling every story, but telling me that each had a story. Mm -hmm. And this arm covered, he goes, I'm a firefighter. Okay. This is all about firefighting, all the way from Philadelphia to the, and each tattoo had a very specific meaning. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He was so pleased that I actually asked him, mm -hmm. and he shared. So, and that, that's kind of the whole idea. That's of, definitely, it's a, I mean, it's definitely a conversation starter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and I always wonder, you know, I think back in the olden days of tattoos, you know, and you got something or the flag or mama or whatever <laughs> it was going to be. But now I think that people do have a sense that, you know, it's more like a tapestry. You know, it, it's a full on ex artful expression of your life. And so maybe you're planning it out a little more thoughtfully. Even if you're not going to do it all at once, you're going to do this and it's going to be, it's not just going to be a bunch of, you know, disparate images. It's going to tell a story mm -hmm. is what I would, would sort of assume that people are a little bit more thoughtful now about planning tattoos. Uh, when I spent time in the tattoo parlors, that's exactly right. You know, they'll be doing a sleeve mm -hmm. or a part of a sleeve and I'll say, well, where are you going with this? And they go, oh, I have this planned right. or I'm waiting for another event in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, sharing as they live. Mm -hmm. One young man said, well, I haven't lived long enough yet, so I got more room. <laughs> I'm saving it. I'm yeah, saving really, my canvas. He is. He's saving yeah. his canvas for mm -hmm. more room. But you know what? The nice thing that's come from all of this, too, is I mentioned the research. And I wanted to share the first research that came out of this, which was from Linfield. And it was called, What Do I Ink of You? Oh. Which, not the most phenomenal marketing. Kind of cute. Kind of cute. And it was, you know, finding out how people think about people with tattoos. And so what they did was they looked at six negative emotional responses to stimulus. And they chose one. They chose contempt. And contempt, they couldn't have chose a worse one in the sense of how terrible it is, mm -hmm. because it's a mix of anger and, con and, and disgust. Mm -hmm. And they chose contempt, and what they did was they uh, took two groups, and they showed some with a tattoo and no explanation, and some with tattoos with an explanation. And if we still have that first uh, slide, they, this is, if it pops up, this is, no, not that one, one more. There, this was the predicted results of the study. They assumed that people in the blue line, if they saw a tattoo without an explanation, 
that their contempt wouldn't improve any. Mm -hmm. You know, it would just stay. And that they predicted that in the red line, that if people did see an explanation with the tattoo, that it would reduce their contempt. Okay? So in this case, I think the, the second slide shows what actually surprised them quite a bit. Yes, the red line, if they saw the image with the text, the, the contempt did to go, did go down. But what surprised them was that people who saw more than one image, their contempt increased. If they didn't know why and they didn't know what it meant, the more they saw of it, the more they hated it. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's pretty bad. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of get that. And, you know, it's truly what not, they did not expect that at all, you know. So I, I think what they learned from it was just by seeing a tattoo, if you don't ask, it's probably going to get worse, you know. But if you do ask, people will learn, people will be less resentful. Right. You look behind what you see to the person. Right. And I, this is another question I had for you. Did you ever find that when you were speaking with somebody that they thought they were getting a tattoo for one reason, but once they had it and lived with it a while, it sort of morphed into something else? Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, I, um, I guess I could see that because sometimes, you know, your subconscious is pretty powerful and you think you know exactly why you're doing something. And then later on you think, oh, it wasn't about that at all. You know, I wonder if you talked to anybody who had, who had the experience of seeing, coming to view their, their own art differently. Actually, not once. Okay. When, Some people were pretty clear. Bring that up. People, every person I spoke to, without exception, never had that occur. Now, there were some who, when they were really young, did a dumb thing. You know, I mean, not 100% of all tattoos are storybook tattoos. Sure, of course. You know, so yeah, there were some who had done tattoos. That, um, you know, it was something they thought, no, oh, I wish I hadn't done that because it doesn't, now I want something that means right, something. Right. But those they usually reincorporated back into, into other tattoos. Else. And probably the real reason was it was so expensive to remove them. So, so where does the project go from here? Well, right now, the next opportunity, by the way, is I'll be talking on June 16th. It's the uh, Pub Talks with City Club. Oh, fun. Okay. So it'll be on the 16th at the um, Maddie's Room. Okay. And so that's where it's going from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just see. You know, we talked about a book. Uh, unfortunately, that's about $50,000 to put the book together. Mm -hmm. So Kickstarter. Well, I thought about Kickstarter, and, and maybe that will happen. But if it does, that'll be the next step. So in the meantime, we're almost out of time. So in the meantime, you're going to do the, the, the pub talk. Yeah. This and will then, be the seventh talk. Seventh talk. And then just kind of see w what happens if somebody comes along to, to offer to, to publish? or. Well, I don't know. We'll, that we'll have to follow. Okay. But I'm continuing to work with Linfield and ASU. That's great. Supplying more pictures and data. And they have such an outreach that that really makes me feel like we're accomplishing something yeah, much greater. I love that. Well, Bill, I really want to thank you for being here today. I really appreciate you coming in and taking the time to give us this update and uh, about the pub talk, too. So that's June 16th mm -hmm. at, what, 7? At uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in Maddie's room. Right. At McMinniman's Hotel Oregon. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much.